welcome beautiful friends to part two of our uh, flowers, uh, feathers and arrows, that's what I'm calling it, feathers and arrows uh, album tutorial. Uh, in part one, we did this, we made a rectangle, no, we <laughs> put together our pages, so so far it just looks like this. And then it opens the other way, like that, okay? So that's what we did in part one. So part two, we are going to get all of our elements uh, together for our pages. So I'll bring out my original prototype here. And so page one, just to recap, page one and three and five of the first um the first way that it opens because it opens this way and then when you get to the end it's flipped this way and it opens the opposite direction right it's accordion so um page one and three and five go like this it has a part that folds down little gatefold that opens to the side and then this that opens up feel free to add more bits and bobs to it if you so desire but that is our first part that we're going to do so we will need to cut some pieces this is a fairly simple album but um i could perhaps along the way i will show you a few extra little bits and bobs that we can do i don't have anything planned necessarily but maybe we'll make something else <laughs> we'll see how we go okay so for the first page design you will need three pieces that measure six and five eighths by nine and three quarters and then your b pieces so those are your a's your b pieces you'll need six of them and they measure four and a half inches by five and a half. Not sure if I mentioned at all, anywhere, sorry, that all my measurements will be in inches, sorry. If you're doing centimeters, you're gonna have to transcribe it into centimeters because inches are the only thing that makes sense in my brain. Um, yeah, anyway, so your C pieces, you'll need three of them. They are five inches by six and three quarters. So let me recap that just in case you missed any of it. A, three of them, six and five eighths, nine and three quarter inches. Six B pieces, four and a half by five and a half inches. And three C pieces, five inches by six and three quarters. Okay, so grab your scoreboard. And we're going to score everything first, add our score tape, and then put everything together. So we are going to score each of the A pieces at half on the 6 and 5 eighths inch side. So that's it. So all three of them, half inch on the 6 and 5 eighths. Those are the A's. The B's, we're going to score on the five and a half inch sides. So the five and a half is at the top. And we are scoring at half and five eighths. So we want a tiny little gusset there. Okay, so we're doing that to all six of the B pieces. Half and five eighths. half and five eighths So that's your B's, your C pieces. We're going to score on the six and three quarter inch side. And we're again going to score at half and five eighths. 
So super easy peasy. You're not breaking the wheel or reinventing the wheel <laughs> of anyone who's a Game of Thrones fan. Uh, Daenerys Targaryen just popped into my head in the breaking of the wheel. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can just ignore me. Um, <laughs> it's one of her best lines. I'm not going to break the wheel. I'm going to destroy the wheel. I think that's what she says. Uh, all right. <laughs> anyway, moving along. Uh, we are going to add uh, score tape to the valley side. So the indented, the indented side um, of every one of those half inch sections. Okay, so. We're putting it just at the end, making sure to not cover over the gusset with your adhesive. You want to make sure that everything moves fabulously. Okay, so that's the C's and do the same with the B's and the A's valley side. Are my nails flashing in the light at all? I got this really funky holographic chrome polish on my nails and I love in the sunlight. It just does all kinds of crazy things. It's so, it's so pretty. I don't, I don't know if, no, the light in here is horrible. It's not going to catch anything, but there's super pretty and rainbowy in the sunshine. Anyway, I digress. Um, now we are going to, now we're going to miter our corners. So we're going at an angle from the edge of the cardstock where the end of the score line is, just at an angle. Um, this just creates a little bit of a neater fold when we fold it. So I did all three of those um, A pieces together. Um, so we're going to do that to all of them. Um, in the cases of the B and the C's, make sure to not cut into that gusset. So start the mitering from the second score line. Like the, I guess the first one that you did, the half inch. Okay, so let's do all of those. Okay, get rid of your little bitties. Arrivederci, bitties. Bye-bye. All right, now we can fold and crease on all of those score lines. Every single one of them. Ooh, that was, that was not a happy noise right there. Sorry. It was almost nails on a chalkboard icky. Um, all right, so I know it's a pain in the butt when there's little gussets to crease every gusset, um, every little score line when they're only an eighth of an inch apart. But trust me, it is a necessary thing. It helps everything just fold and move really smoothly. So. It is important. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay, I'm gonna do the rest of these off camera because you don't need to see me do every single, you can, you can crease the score line. 
I have absolute faith in you. But do use your bone folder. Um, it does it does help to really make the the better everything is creased, the better everything will move. So yes. So now once you have everything folded and creased, bring in your um, your constructed album so far. So um, I was saying earlier in the first part that I, you can have this going either way. I prefer to have the four gussets on the left hand side because it's slightly thicker. Um, so that's the way I'm going to do it. Feel free to do it whichever way you so desire. So I'm going to start by putting your piece A at the very top of the first page. Try to get it as even as possible. Okay, so there it is. And now, um, so we're going to do, we're going to do the same thing on pages one, three, and five. So now we're going to take, so put the other two A pieces aside and grab two of your B pieces. And they are going to go on the left and the right of the base. So lift up your A and adhere two of the Bs. They're going to go on the left and the right of the base on the ball at the bottom. Okay, so right down here. This one. And then make sure that they're even. There are your B pieces, and then put the rest of the B pieces aside for now. Grab one of the C pieces, and it's going to go on the bottom, so open up the Bs. It's going to go centered at the bottom of the base page, so centered left to right. Um, feel free to measure this. I am just going to eyeball it because that's what I tend to do and most of the time it turns out okay. <laughs> but if you would like it to be perfect, then please feel free to measure it exactly. I feel like mine is a smidge off. Now, now as soon as I said that, now I want to measure it just to see if it is. Move it over just a smidge. I thought it was over. There, I'm committing. It's going down. Okay, there we go. That's our C. So the A is going to close first. The B's are going to close over top of the A. The C is going to close over top of the B's. All right, and um, you don't have to add any magnets if you so desire. I am going to put, I'm going to put two magnets uh, on the C piece going to the top of the base. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. You can add swing tabs if you prefer, something like that. Um, I might still do that, but I'm also going to add the magnets. So I'm putting two little pieces of score tape up in the like in the corners here and here on the back of the C piece putting two magnets that are magnetized together 
on that little bit of score tape. You want to make sure that there's about a half an inch all the way around the magnet so that the paper can fully cover it when you add your pattern paper. Okay, and then more score tape on top of that. Close it up, give it a press down, and bada bing bada boom. You got, you got a couple sets of magnets. Snap. Love that. Okay, excellent. So, all those steps that we just did, we're going to do them again. So this was page one. This is page two. This is page three. So we're going to do each one of those steps one more time. So first with the A at the top. And I mean, if you want to switch it up, feel free to go backwards. You can put the A at the bottom instead this time. If you want to do that and then put the, let's do that. You know what, just for, just for fun and for, for giggles, you know? Just to keep it, keep it interesting. Okay, so let's put A at the bottom this time. Okay, and we'll open it down. And then we'll take two of our B pieces. And we're gonna put them at the top of the base instead of the bottom. Why am I talking like this? I have no idea. <laughs> this is what happens when you're speaking to an empty room for hours at a time. <laughs> oh, oh, I think that might be a little bit crooked. Is it crooked? I think I'm a, I think I'm a smidgy smidge crooked. That's all right. Okay, so let's put these at the top instead. On either side. Oh. Okay, and then the C piece is going to go at in the center um, at the top since that's where our B's are. Sorry if my head gets in the way. I want to try and get this as straight as I can. Okay. You say hi to everybody. Say hi. <gasps> What's happening? <gasps> cha, 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 cha. Cha, 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 cha. Are you a good boy? Are you a good boy? Are you a good boy? Oh, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Okay. Okay. So. This will close like this. Or if you prefer, you can do it like that as as well. Um, I mean, I guess that's completely, completely up to you. Um, another little thing you can do is have it close like this and then have another piece that attaches here and goes up that way. Um, I'm just going to quickly cut a piece and just do a little add-on to this one. Um, don't feel like you have to. I just every once in a while get inspired or feel like doing a little extra something something so I'm going to do that. So I'm cutting a piece out of my scraps that is five by, how oh, wide is this, is six and a quarter. So five by six and a quarter. Why that measurement? I'm doing it five because I want it to be the same width as our C piece. And six and a quarter simply because that's what my piece of scrap paper already was. So I'm just using up my scraps. And I'm gonna grab my scoreboard real quick. Get my notes out of the way. And I'm going to score it on the six and a quarter inch side at half and five eighths. And quickly add some 
score tape on that and wetter the corners and just add that extra piece on. Okay, give those a quick crease. And I'm just going to adhere that on there and I think I might add um, one of the um, cut aparts or something up here just to cover because I don't want that this little this little space between the two B pieces uh, right up there I don't want really don't really want that to be shown so I'll add an embellishment or I'll add a card or something just to cover that up so you can't tell that, that is the case um, so I'm going to put that here that onto my C piece at the bottom again this is completely optional it's just an extra little extra little bitty okay and then I'm going to add two magnets onto this one that will adhere or that will magnetize to the fronts of the bees. And that goes up like that. All right, so now they kind of look uh, completely, well, not completely different, but I mean, it's just an extra little, an extra little thing. And then that goes up like that. It's just fun to sometimes switch it up a little bit. Okay, so that was page three. This is page four. And on page five, we're gonna do the same thing again. So I'm going to do this one the exact same way that we did the very first one. But if you feel like adding in an extra element, you go for it. Oh, I hope my head didn't get in the way there. Sorry if it did. Okay, so there's your A. Your B. These go down at the bottom. On the left and the right. Okay, and then the C goes right in the center at the bottom. This one looks teensy bit crooked. Let's see if we can fix that. Okay. So that, and then that, and then that. And I mean, feel free to do something else funky if you so desire. Um, I'm going to leave this one the way it is. I'm not going to alter all of them. So we're just going to put the two magnets on. There's four page designs. So I think maybe if we alter one of, so all four page designs will be used three times. And if we alter one of each of them, I think that would be good. And then we've also got the front and uh, the inside front and back covers. So we can do something fun there because I don't have 
anything planned for those yet. I'm just gonna kind of do those on the on the fly and see how we go. <laughs> I usually look at how often how I create page designs honestly is to look at what size scraps I have beside me and try and figure out something that I can do with the scraps so I don't have to so I don't like to throw away uh, cardstock because it it's you know paper is expensive so um, I use up as much as I possibly can so often I will create page designs just based on what I have for the scraps. All right, so there is pages one, five, sorry, one, three, and five. Okay, so now set this aside again, and now we are going to cut our pieces for our second page design. Okay, so the second page design is going to go on pages two, four, and six of that same side that we're already working on, okay? So you will need six A pieces and they measure six and a quarter inches by six and a half inches. You'll need three B pieces and they measure four and a quarter by seven and a quarter. And you'll need three C pieces and they are eight and a half by 11, okay? So get those cut and grab your scoreboard. All of your A pieces we are going to score at half on the six and a half inch side. Okay, so all six of them. going to score first at half on the four and a quarter inch side. Okay, and then we're going to rotate a quarter turn. And so now it's on the seven and a quarter inch side and we're going to score at half and six and three quarters. Okay, so it's going to look like that. And do, do that to all three of the B pieces they are going to serve as pockets. So half, rotate, half and six and three quarters. And then the eight and a half by 11 piece. We're literally just going to score it um, on the 11 inch side at five and a half. So just in half. It's This is just going to be um, the insert for the pocket that's going to close everything. So just score that in half. pieces all you need to do is fold them in half give them a little burnish with your bone folder and then get your scoreboard out of the way we'll add our score tape to all the half inch sections of everything else so on the B pieces you're going to be adding score tape to three sides um, on the valley side, the indented side. Thank you. 
eight pieces. It's just one strip of score tape on that half inch section. So still going on the valley side, still leaving a little space between the score tape and the score line itself. Okay, now we're going to miter the corners. So the A's are really straightforward. You can do a couple at a time if you so desire. And then on your uh, pocket pieces, your A, your B's, um, we're going to miter these two corners as per normal. But then we're going to do where the score lines intersect, we're going to do just like we did with the covers. So we're going to cut it in an angle until they intersect and then we're going to cut out at an angle. Okay, so it looks like that. I'm doing all three at once. Probably not good practice in all honesty, but I did it anyway. Okay. Um, say ciao to all your biddies. Ciao, biddies. And fold increase. Pardon me. I just burped. Um, fold and crease on all of your score lines. Please and thank you. I'm gonna do this off camera. You've got the hang of this part. Your B's are gonna look like that. Your A's are just gonna be straightforward and your C's you might have already done. All right, so I'll be back in uno momento. <clears throat> Once everything is folded and creased, Bring your book back in, your album back in, and we're going to be working on page two here. So, I'm going to take two of the A pieces. Nope, sorry. Wrong page. Looking at the wrong page here. We're going to... Uh, yeah, we're taking two of the A pieces. <laughs> I was right the first time. And they are going to go on the right and left edges of the base. So right up to, but not over the score line there. So right beside that little gusset that has the bit of chipboard in it. So there's one, and then the other one is going to go on the left-hand side. So the left one should go over top of the right one. So they will overlap by like an inch and a half or so. Okay, so have the left one going over the right. Put the rest of your A's away, where those are gonna be for the other pages. Take one of your um, B pocket pieces. We're gonna remove the backing from the sides of it first. Then we're gonna push the bottom down so that it meets in the corners there. So this just helps, um, if any of you have done my tutorials before, let me just get a, another piece here. So this just helps though, when something slides into the pocket, it's just a smooth slide all the way down. If this bottom part was underneath the two sides, sometimes it would get caught on this little lip here and not go all the way into the pocket. So that's why I like to do it that way. Is it a life and death situation? No, if you forget, it's not really a big deal. But I like to do it anyway. So 
there it is. <laughs> okay, so this B pocket, the opening of the pocket, is going to be facing the left. It's felt like it's going to be facing the left, and it should meet up pretty much perfectly with the left edge of your with your left uh, A piece. Okay, so here's the pocket here, and the left A pretty much meets it exactly. And then your C piece is the piece that we just folded in half. So it's going to be the insert that goes into the pocket that essentially closes the other two pieces. Now, um, I am going to put a magnet from the back side of the left C going onto the right C to keep it closed that way. Um, and I might even put, I think I'm going to also put a magnet on the actual insert itself. Um, you don't have to do that, but I think I'm going to do that as well. So I'm going to put a, two magnets magnetized together. And then another piece of score tape. And then close that. So now the left A is magnetized to the right A. And then I'm going to put one magnet just onto the back side of my insert. Just so it kind of stays put and doesn't fall out of the pocket while oops, while the album's being looked at, you know? That's one of my pet peeves is when I like all pockets to be super secure so none of your tags are ever going to fall out. Okay. So now I'm just going to stick this in the pocket, holding up this half of it until it's all the way in the pocket where I want it, and then push it down. So now that now the that uh, insert will magnetize into its pocket and stay there. All right. So now flip over the next page. So that was page two. This is page three. We're going to do the exact same thing on page four. Or should we switch up page four a little bit? What do you think? Let's see. We could do the pocket on the opposite side. Let's do that. And maybe we'll do something fun in the insert as well. So the A's are going on the left and the right hand side. Okay, so this time let's have the right A going over the left A. We'll kind of make it backwards. So let's put a couple magnets going from the inside of the right A to the left A, just to switch it up a little bit. Just like that. And now the pocket is still going to go in the same place. It's going to go, well, it's going to go opposite of the one we did last time. It's going to go on the left side instead of the right side, but it's going to meet the, the opposite A. Okay, so pocket over on the far left edge.
Okay. And then we can put a magnet on the back of our um, insert here. Uh, in the pocket. I feel like I want to do one more like something or other here. Okay, so I've got this piece that is five and three quarters by twelve, I believe. Yes. So I'm gonna grab my scoreboard. Just gonna add an extra little bitty. Please only do this if you feel like doing it. You don't have to. The page is done as I had originally intended it to be done. Um, but I'm gonna score this on the 12 inch side. I'm gonna score it half. And then I need this to be three and three quarters. I'm just doing this on the fly, so. Okay, so. Got a piece that is 11 and a half inches by five and three quarters. I have scored it at half an inch, four and a quarter inches, and eight inches, and then folded it like an accordion. And I am going to adhere this onto the front of my pocket. So I'm just going to add some score tape to this half inch section. And miter the corners. And adhere it onto the left side of my pocket. Can't decide whether I want it on the right or the left. It doesn't really matter. You decide. You decide whether you want it on the right or the left. It matters, it matters not at all, <laughs> actually. Okay, just like that. Um, but I want a way to keep that closed. I guess I could just use a couple magnets. So I could put a set of magnets in between here and here. here. Over here, what else do I have in my scraps? I think I might do a tiny little, tiny little closure of some kind. Yeah, I've just got a scrap piece. How big is this? I cut it down. It is so three inches wide. Cut it to maybe four, so three inches by four inches. And then I'm just gonna score it on the four inch side at half and five eighths. Just 
just mitering the corners, folding on the score lines, and then I'm going to add that so that it uh, attaches to the pocket itself. Um, centered up and down. And then it's going to go over top of that uh, little accordion that we just created. You can cut this a little bit shorter even if you so desire. I think I do desire. I'm just gonna... I think I do desire. So I'm just gonna cut maybe a half an inch off. How straight was that? Was that straight? Straight-ish. That's pretty good to me. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to add a little magnet closing that, and then we will do our other page that is, we'll do it just like the first one. Thank you for indulging me on my little whims of loving to switch things up as I go. Okay. So there we go, and now we're going to flip it over, and this is page six, and we're going to do what we originally did in the beginning. Okay, so everything's going to be the same as page two. So we're putting our A pieces on the left and the right. Left will go over top of the right, so we're going to add that magnet. I was trying to remember which way we went originally. So we're going to put a little piece of score tape on the inside of the left one. And then we're going to put our pocket right here. Removing the sides first. Folding the bottom up to adhere in the corners. Final C piece will go in the pocket, so let's add a one magnet to hold it in place. Okay, and put that in there, and then let the magnet in here. All right, so you are done your first kind of half of the album. So this first half is all the page elements are in there. Okay, and then in the next part, part three, we will work on all the rest of these because these are all still blank on the other side. So we'll do our final two page designs. So join me in the next part, which will be out in a couple days. Okay, love you all. Have a fantastic day. Please subscribe if you like this video. Appreciate it. <laughs> Bye.